around them. It's like the sun that is always shining 24-7 on the good, on the bad. Swamiji left, but I once heard that Swami is really God's name, or you could say the Paramatman, the self's name. That's which is independent, which is itself. And we call Swamiji's Swamiji's because they are seriously committed to learning that, to knowing who they are. Like that, we could say anyone who cultivates your spirit, at least in that moment, is a friend. But the only real friend you'll ever have is God or the self. It will never leave you. Your wife, your husband, your, your animals, everything in this universe changes. The friend, the true friend, what the friend um, signifies, it never changes. It's always there with you. In the world of Advaita Vedanta philosophy, and Ramana in his own way stated the same, there's a definition of what is real. We could say it's also a definition of the Sadguru, it's the definition of the heart, it's the definition of Brahman, it's the definition of Paramatman. What is real? That which does not change. It is immutable. It is eternal. And they speak of that which is unreal. And the unreal is that which never appears. The examples that Shankara gave were you will never see a square circle. You will never see the child of a barren woman. You will never see a married bachelor. By definition, those are impossible. You won't see them in a dream. You won't see them in a hallucination. That is unreal. And then there's something strange. This world, your body, this hall, this microphone, it appears. Because it appears, they do not call it unreal. But because it changes, they don't call it real. It's something unusual. They call it sat-asat vilakshana, sat, the real, asat, the unreal, vilakshana, other than the real or the unreal. The friend, the true friend, is eternal. It's rather interesting that way. Ramana, in his life, was always directing people to the question, who are you? Who am I? The I was what was important. And he had a beautiful way of saying, no matter what sadhana you do, and there's multitudinous sadhanas in this world, all of them except Atma Vichara, as he defined it, utilize the mind. And the mind exists by the borrowed light of the Atman. So everyone eventually has to come to the I. Isn't it interesting that in English there's a single syllable I, and in my life, and I doubt in your life, you've ever been jealous? Envious when someone says I. In Tamil, non. I doubt whether you're um, envious. The minute I say me and mine, we've got trouble. Ramana said, you know, the last thing that you drop before you go to sleep at night is the I. And the I means I am so-and-so. I add on to the I the drama. And the first thing that arises in the morning when you wake up is the I, first person singular. And the entire universe, second person, third person, are built upon that I. I say, I am going to the talk today. I am hungry. We add to the I. But until the I is there, this universe is not there. Ramana had a wonderful way of pointing 
human beings, and I assume animals as well, towards seeking that I, experiencing that I. You know the waking state teaches us a number of very important facts. In the waking state, I am there. You can say the same. In the waking state, you are there. In the waking state, the light of the universe is external to you. The sun illumines the earth. And the other beautiful thing about the waking state is it gives you a paradigm for reality. You may be incorrect about what reality is, but you've got a definition. There is something called reality. Take the dreaming state. I am there. But the dreaming state also teaches me I am the light of the dream universe. And Ramana was never tired of saying, you know, when you dream, it's real as long as you're dreaming. It's only when you, quote, wake up that you say, oh, it was a dream. It wasn't real. But while you dream, you accept it. The deep sleep state teaches us, I am there. No one can say, I am not there. But there's no content, which shows you can exist without the universe, without content. The I is present in the waking state, the dreaming state, the deep sleep state. Human beings, and Ramana used to say, most people who come to him think there's two eyes, the egotistical eye and the Paramatman, the great eye. How is that possible? The eye that we think is the human being is a mistake. Think about the definition of what's real. I am a male human being. I am a professor. I am an author. I am a husband. All of those things change. The I does not change. Isn't it interesting if you think about it, this is my hair. It belongs to me. In English, my is a personal pronoun meaning possession. This is my nose. This is my hand. This is my car. These things belong to me. Ramana would ask, who's the owner of these things? You're not these things. They belong to you. Once Ramana said you were better off saying, my body came to the hall today, not I came to the hall today. The I is eternal. It does not change. Seek the I. Seek the I. Who am I? It's not a mantra. It's not something to contemplate. When one says, who am I, there should be no answer. When an answer comes up, then one could ask again, who does the answer come to? But when one asks, who am I, the mind freezes for a moment. And the mind is the, the difficulty or the presenter for our delusion. In Advaita and in Ramana's teachings, moksha is defined as avidyanasha, the destruction of ignorance, or it's des described as mononasha, the destruction of the mind. We use the mind, and it keeps on going. All of us like to say, I'm going to be a sadhaka, I'm going to do sadhana, I'll chant my mantra, I will go on yatras, I will go to the temple. We will do all of these things. But who's looking for, who's the one who is doing these things. I have heard many people, so many years I have gone to Ramana Ashram, and they said, well, you say, who am I? And nothing happens, and so they give it up. But each time one tries it, you know, if I took a sledgehammer and hit the concrete wall one time, nothing will happen. Fifty times, maybe nothing happens. But if I hit it enough times, 
that wall will fall down. It's not the 1,000th hit that took it down. It was all 1,000 hits. I read the other day that Ramana said, and it's a story, he used to tell lots of stories that some other sage in history told. This one Ramana told. There is a hill, and a Sadguru is the one at the top of the hill. The Sadguru made his way from the bottom to the top. The Sadguru usually tells the route that he or she took. But there are many routes up that hill, and the Sadguru sitting at the top of the hill knows all of them. So the Sadguru can see a sadhaka who doesn't like, is not attracted to the, the, the pra practice that the guru took, but he can say, move to the right, move to the left. Ramana gave the example, and different people have given it, with slightly different um, content. Ramana said there's three types of sadhakas. First type is like gunpowder. The minute they hear, who am I, or that you are the self, aham brahmasmi, moksha. Those are rare people. There were a few around Ramana, but not many. And the second type were like charcoal, with just a little bit of um, inquiry, a little bit of discrimination, a little bit of detachment, moksha. Again, there's not a lot of those. Ramana said, for those two types, Atma Vichara is the Upadesha. And then there's a third type. They're like a green tree trunk. And it takes a lot and lot and lot of sadhana to dry that tree trunk out. So Ramana, someone once said to him, you're an Ajati Vadan. Personally, with my training in Madras with the Advaitins at the university, I'm very fond of Ajativada. Ajativada means nothing has ever happened. There is no birth. There is no death. Everyone in this hall believes they were born, and I'm assuming you at least assume you will die one day. But think about what is real and what is not real. In your dream... You, you experienced something. You went to Bombay last night. You had dinner at the Taj Mahal Hotel, etc. While it was happening, you thought it was real. You woke up and you said, I didn't go to Bombay. I didn't have dinner at the Taj Mahal Hotel. Like that, Ajati Vaden says, nothing has ever happened. In eternity, nothing has ever happened. Even, and I say it and some people cringe, Ramana himself said, there are no jnanis. There is only jnana. There is no Ramana. There is no Krishna. There is no Buddha. Yes, there is a manifestation. There is an appearance. But is the appearance real? No. It comes, it goes. It comes, it goes. Find that which is eternal. That is your friend. That is the one you want. Manifestations we take. We do it every day. We chant the mantra. Oh, look, it's real. There's a male sitting in the front and a female is sitting next to him. It's a, a horrible expression in English. Seeing is believing. We see things and we believe they're real. Because you see it doesn't necessarily mean it's real. It just means you experience something. But you can experience something which is not real. And what human beings tend to do is to chase the experience, not find who is the experiencer. If you don't know who you are, how can you possibly think you know so many things? I bet you know... 10 million facts. There's a Yosemite, there's some pyramids, there's the um, Eiffel Tower in Paris, there's the Taj Mahal Hotel. I mean, think of all the facts you know. But what are they built upon? You don't know the knower. 
If you don't know the knower, it means those facts are built upon sand and they may not be accurate. Find the knower and then if you want to go after facts, very happy. Advaitins love to say there's one thing you cannot deny, logically. I, I've never heard an Advaita Swamiji or scholar who doesn't tell you. you. There's one thing you cannot deny. I can deny that Shiva exists. It's logical. He may exist, but I can deny him logically. I can deny you're sitting there right now. I may be dreaming or hallucinating, but I cannot deny that I exist. To say I don't exist, I have to affirm myself to deny myself. It's illogical. Who's the I who's saying I don't exist? The I is always there. Always there, but we're never looking for it. Years ago in a classroom in Michigan, it dawned on me there's a second thing you cannot deny. And in all the literature I've read, and as a scholar, I've read a lot of literature, I've never heard anyone complain it or um, state this. Though I don't associate with shaktas. And so maybe somewhere in shakta literature it said, you cannot deny the shakti. To say the shakti doesn't exist, you have to use the shakti. So you're affirming the shakti to deny it. So you cannot deny the self, and you cannot deny the power. The power is there. Years ago, I read one of Ramana's statements that he was talking about the Shakti. The Shakti is the manifestation of Brahman. If you think that the lectern is lectern is object, you're mistaken. You're looking through the mind. But lectern as Brahman, as the self, is real. How do you see it? The Shakti. But Ramana said the Shakti never comes in front. It's, I wish I could find that quote because um, it was his words talking about um, the difference between Atman and Shakti. They're the same, but he gave a, a, an interesting comment about the Shakti. But I find it interesting, especially in Tamil Nadu, because people love to stay Shiva and Shakti. You get both of them. And some people worship Shakti. But today I was reading a passage, I just opened the book of Ramana, and he said, the Shakti is the self. The self is the Shakti. So if you worship the Shakti, it's still the self. If you worship the self, it's the Shakti. So, um, it's been a long day, and I think I'm going to stop here. Um, thank you for um, inviting me um, to be with friends today. Um, it's a, a glorious day when uh, you get together with people who are interested or love Ramana Maharshi. So thank you.